Well, hey guys, for today's video, we're going to be talking about chicken skin under the eyes. I have seen a lot of comments. Please talk about chicken skin under the eyes, what causes it, how to get rid of it, what are the best products for chicken skin under the eyes, and we're gonna dive into this topic in today's video. Eyelid skin is very thin. Because of this, it's very vulnerable to irritation from things that come in contact with it. Common allergens, personal care products, makeup, all these things can lead to eyelid irritation. Because it's thin, delicate, and vulnerable, it is very vulnerable to the environmental stressors that age our skin, including ultraviolet radiation, pollution, visible light, infrared radiation. Not only the skin of the eyes, but the anatomy around the eyes changes as we get into our wiser years. We get bone resorption around the eye, and we also get redistribution of fat, along with thinning skin under the eyes. All of these things culminate together in the visible signs of skin aging around the eyes with some unique features. One of these changes is the appearance of almost a pebbly-like texture to the under eye. Now this isn't obvious in everyone, but some people see it and you may notice it on yourself in certain lighting, especially side lighting. What the heck is it? Well, basically what it is, is you are seeing underneath the skin some of the oil glands, the sebaceous oil glands that reside there, attached to a follicle, a pore. And as the skin thins out, those globs underneath the skin, those sebaceous lobules that take up space there, you can see them as a little bump underneath that very thin skin. You may start seeing this early on, maybe even your whole life you've noticed this kind of pebbly skin. You just have a tendency to have thinner skin in that area and these bumps are a lot more obvious for you. It's not a character flaw, it's just part of human biology and in some people it's going to be more obvious than in others. Some other things that may accompany the noticeability of the sebaceous glands under the eyes that also go along with aging of the skin around the eyes is more prominent under eye hollows. As you get that bony resorption around the eye and redistribution of fat pockets, the under eye area looks almost like there is a prominent hollow, a tear trough. And for a lot of people that can make the under eye area appear as though there are dark circles. So you have thin skin, dark circles, sunken eyes. There are a lot of bumps that can occur around the eyes. Uh, prominent sebaceous glands is not the only one. Speaking of sebaceous glands, you can have an enlargement of sebaceous glands known as sebaceous hyperplasia. That can occur around the eyes. It's a lot different than just obvious sebaceous glands in that it's actually the oil glands themselves kind of getting abnormally large. And this can happen anywhere on the face. These appear as firm yellowish to white bumps that have a little central depression in them. They're not harmful, and there are a variety of interventions that can be pursued at your dermatologist's office to remove them. Check out my video all on sebaceous hyperplasia. We go into detail all the tips and tricks for dealing with sebaceous hyperplasia on the face. The under eye area is not an uncommon location to develop something called syringoma. These flattish bumps that are actually little non-cancerous tumors of the sweat gland. They are not dangerous. And again, there are procedures and interventions that your dermatologist can do to remove them if they bother you cosmetically. Check out my video all about syringomas if that's something you're dealing with. Not only can you get them around your eye, but you can get them elsewhere on the body, including on the chest. They are known to erupt in large numbers for some people. Those are tumors of the sweat gland. Whereas sebaceous hyperplasia and prominent sebaceous glands, AKA the chicken skin you all are worried about, um, that's actually related to the sebaceous oil gland, not the sweat gland. You can also develop little annoying hard white cysts around the eyelid skin called milia. I know a lot of y'all deal with this. Milia cysts, probably more common around the eyelid area because the skin there is so thin and more vulnerable to irritation. Now milia cysts, they're firm, they're white, they're hard. They can occur in young children, they can occur in certain genetic conditions, but they can also occur in areas where you have a lot of sun damage. Damage. The skin is just more vulnerable to forming cysts. Like the backs of the hands is a common area for milia. You can get them on the cheeks, the nose. If you've had any prior skin injury, like an aggressive derm abrasion, that also can put you at risk for the formation of milia. See a dermatologist, there are a few simple interventions that can remove milia for you. Uh, no product is necessarily going to melt them away, but there are a few over-the-counter products like alpha hydroxy acids and retinols that can help reduce the formation of them 
check out my video all about how to get rid of milia. We go into the different types of products in that video. Then you also have these flat yellowish growths that can occur around the eyes known as xanthomas. This is seen in people who have problems with their blood lipids. If you have very high triglycerides, for example, you can develop these. Treating the underlying blood lipid abnormality can correct the xanthomas. There are also a few easy interventions that the dermatologist can perform to remove them as well. Then you have a condition called dermatosis papulosa nigra. Then you have a condition, dermatosis papulosa nigra, DPNs. These are seen in people with deeper skin tones. They're actually a variant of skin tags. They can have it on the cheeks and around the eyes. Again, these are not dangerous. They're pretty common skin condition. And there are, again, a variety of interventions that a dermatologist can do to remove them. Check out my video all about these bumps if it's something that you're dealing with. Now that you know all about why it is that you start to see chicken skin or more obvious sebaceous glands under the eye, as well as a variety of different bumps that can occur in this location, what can be done to improve the appearance of chicken skin or get rid of it or prevent it? Probably one of the most proactive things that you can do starting today if you're not doing it already is to protect that skin from the sun. UV rays, namely UVA, penetrate the skin very deeply and destroy the supportive framework. Ultimately, that thins out the skin and leads to the appearance of more obvious sebaceous glands. Now, if you're someone who already has this noticeable change or you've had it your whole life, don't feel as though sun protection is going to be futile for you. It's going to help allow for healthy collagen by putting the brakes on collagen degradation from the sun. And it's also going to prevent it from worsening. Sunscreen is a great way to protect the skin, but unfortunately a lot of sunscreens can end up burning and stinging around the eyes. The ones that tend to do that the most are organic sunscreens, AKA chemical sunscreens, especially the ones sold in the US. Those sold outside of the US, they have more filters, more organic active ingredients that they can work with than what we have here in the US. So they're able to make sunscreens that tend, in my experience, to be easier to tolerate around the eyes. But by and large, mineral, aka inorganic sunscreens, are the easiest to tolerate around the eyelids. And I suggest choosing a water-resistant mineral sunscreen, not only because the mineral sunscreen is less likely to be irritating, but those that are water-resistant tend to stay in place better. They don't run into the eyes as much. Another option for uh, applying sunscreen to the eyes is to use a sunscreen Stick. People love using sunscreen sticks around the eyes because in contrast to a cream or a lotion, it's less likely as you are applying it to run into your eyes, which can lead to burning and stinging symptoms. The thing you need to be careful with with sunscreen sticks is that they are prone to skip areas. Now, of course, when you have such a narrow area, like in the upper and lower eyelid area, that's less likely, but make sure you do a couple of coats. Don't just swipe it on really quick and abandon ship. Now, as I've emphasized in all of my videos, you never want to rely solely on sunscreen to protect your skin, including the delicate, vulnerable skin around your eyes. Also, you wanna be wearing sunglasses. Now, when it comes to choosing sunglasses, price is not the thing. More expensive is not better. What you wanna look for is sunglasses that say 100% UV protection. That way they're protecting your eyes and the skin around your eyes where the lenses cover. But you also wanna take a look at the frames. The more territory the frames cover, the better. If they're able to cover some territory of, of light coming in from the side, that's even better. Less likely to get around this area. Also, get yourself a broad brimmed hat. But a broad brimmed hat can really offer you a lot of additional sun protection and ensure good protection against UV rays hitting the eyelid skin, depending on the coverage that the hat affords you. Now, don't just rely on a hat by itself. You still need sunscreen because one thing people don't realize is that the UV rays, they are reflected up off of surfaces. So for example, if you're walking on a white sand beach and all you have is a hat and you're not wearing sunscreen, not only can you get a burn, but of course those UV rays can then damage the eyelid skin as well as your eyes. So sunglasses, sunscreen, hat, the full package. What about skincare products? Can any skincare products help to improve the appearance of those prominent sebaceous glands and thinning under eyelid skin? A skincare ingredient that can definitely improve the appearance with long-term consistent use provided you tolerate it is going to be a retinol 
eye cream. I suggest using a retinol eye cream because they're often formulated to be better tolerated around the delicate skin of the eyelids. One thing with retinol are the prescription versions like tretinoin or tazeratine. Uh, while they can be used to the eyelid skin, they are often too irritating in that area. So in general, I you know suggest people try a retinol eye cream to minimize irritation. Because the skin is thin, it has a better chance of receiving the retinol, so the formulation can be tweaked a bit to make it easier to tolerate, and you can still derive the benefits of, say, a retinol. Retinol is going to work in the eyelid skin area by uh, being converted to the active form in your skin. And once it does that, it can improve collagen production. And it also can help, along with the aid of sun protection, to minimize the destruction of collagen due to UV rays. And it does this by putting the brakes on activation of enzymes that chew up your collagen, which are activated when you go out in the sun. So UV rays activate something called matrix metalloproteinase enzymes that chew up collagen and degrade the extracellular matrix. Ultimately, that thins out the deeper layer of the skin and makes those sebaceous glands more obvious. So by using a retinol eye cream, that can really help improve collagen health, if you will, in that area and ultimately improve the look of the under eye area. You also have retinaldehyde eye creams, eye serums, whatever you want to call them. Retinaldehyde um, may be a little bit more efficient in getting to the active form depending on the product formulation overall. And it, like retinol, will achieve the same outcomes of improving collagen health and ultimately that's going to improve the look of the under eye area. So I will link in the description box my favorite retinol eye cream and my favorite retinaldehyde eye cream. They both, you know, either one could be utilized in this area and with consistent use you may appreciate some improvement in the under eye area. Now don't expect miracle skincare products they can only do so much. Consistency is key, but with long-term consistent use, they may help in mitigating the accumulation of damage in that area that leads to either more obvious sebaceous glands, more obvious thinning, or accelerates the onset of things for you. Don't underestimate the value of a moisturizer around the eyes. Moisturizers help reduce water loss from the skin. They help improve the moisture content of the stratum corneum. That can improve the look of fine lines, wrinkles, and it also improves the the appearance of the skin just by hydration. And when the top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum, is nice and hydrated, the skin surface ap appears more supple, more smooth, and just by light scattering, that definitely can mitigate the appearance of those prominent sebaceous glands that you know give rise to that chicken skin-like appearance. You don't necessarily need a dedicated eye cream to achieve this effect. The facial moisturizer that you use should be more than fine to use around the eyes. Now, you also can pursue cosmetic procedures. For example, laser resurfacing around the eyelid area can improve the look of of the skin there, it can really lead to a lot of improvement in skin texture in this area. Of course, filler can be placed in this area, but it's a bit controversial. And one potential risk of filler in the under eye area is if it's not placed properly, it can result in these bluish nodules, uh, especially because the skin there is so thin, it's, it's a lot more likely in this area. Um, but it's definitely you know, something that some people pursue and, and appreciate benefit because the hyaluronic acid filler, for example, is going to improve the moisture content in the deeper layers of the skin and fill things out. And ultimately that's going to diminish the appearance of those sebaceous glands for you. But that's not going to be the right choice for everyone and there are potential complications. See my video on filler gone wrong. We go over the complications that you can run into with cosmetic filler. Chemical peels can also be performed under the eyelid skin. We always think of chemical peels as something very harsh, but in reality, a series of very gentle peels under the eyes with hydroxy acids can improve skin texture, smoothness, and also can help in improving collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. Ultimately, that's going to smooth things out. Uh, but it definitely can improve the appearance of under eye skin. Check out my video all about Chemical peels, uh, I happen to think they are underrated and this is a location where they might be uh, appropriate for you and your concern re regarding chicken skin appearance uh, under the eye. In my video on chemical peels, we go into the different types, how they all differ, what to expect with them. So don't miss that video if that's something that you are interested in. All right, y'all, that is everything I can tell you about chicken skin under the eyes. Chicken skin is just, you know, a common term. Uh, a lot of people say chicken skin and they're talking about keratosis pilaris, which can happen really anywhere on the body where you have hair. 
Uh, it's a dry skin condition where you have rough bumps. Uh, most often happens like on the arms, the thighs. It's a dry skin condition. It's different than what we talked about in this video. You can develop it on the face. If you have this condition, check out the video on the insulate all about how to get rid of keratosis pilaris on the face. And so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.